Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's election time. The 18th Lok Sabha elections are upon us. It's the world's largest democratic exercise. And a critical question is, who will get how many numbers? At the end of the day, this is the numbers game. Across this country, people want to know not just who will win, but often by what margin. That's what we're going to do over the next 45 minutes, dive deep into those numbers, try and understand cephalogically and politically which way is the country heading. So Rahul and I are joined today by a very special panel of people who are going to stake their reputation by telling us who's going to win come the third week of May, not just who's going to win Rahul, but by what margins, who gets how many seats? And all of it is being recorded, gentlemen. So you will be tested on the day the actual results come out. So you've seen them dance on television. This is where their numbers will dance for us. We did this in 2019, just before the general election. This was one of the most widely tracked sessions. It was buzzing on social media and digital television for very long. So we're very excited about doing an encore. Most of our cast and crew is the same. Some faces have changed, new talent has emerged. So allow me to introduce to you our guests, Pradeep Gupta, known largely for his dancing, sometimes for his numbers. Uh, Access My India, thank you very much, Pradeep. Yashwan Deshmukh, thank you very much for coming down all the way from Dubai. We've got Amitabh Tiwari, used to be a sharp numbers wizard on the banking side, is now applying the same skill, the same... Uh, assessment, analysis to election data. I said, I'm a Bihari, I mean, politics is in my blood. Banking was something I was just doing for a living. So thank you. And GVL Narsimha Rao, I thought he'd come all suited, booted, because this is the conclave. He's come in his Neta Aftar. So he's clearly telling us, I'm Neta first, numbers later. I want to start by showing you the image as it stands. This is the picture from the last Lok Sabha. It gives you a sense of the starting point in this election. And then uh, we'll talk to each of the experts about where we may end up sometime in May. So, basis the last Lok Sabha elections, I'll just walk across and try and show this to you here. This is where things stand. So, in the states marked out in grey, the BJP maxed it. So, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, they've done as well as they could. The areas demarcated in this yellowish tone are the states where there is some room to grow. So they had an 85% strike rate in Maharashtra, 38% uh, in Odisha, 43% in West Bengal, 64% in Assam, 80% in UP, uh, Andhra Pradesh, they had nothing. So that's where you can grow. So that's the headroom that is available uh, for the Bharatiya Janata Party and for the National Democratic Alliance to grow in the 2024 Lok Sabha election. So the alliance needs to increase its strike rate from 40% to 57% in 16 states to achieve this target. Elsewhere, they've already peaked out in the Hindi heartland. So that's the starting point. To ensure that Rajdeep and I had to do the minimum amount of work, and the experts did the maximum amount of work, so we could juice them for uh, them having come here, we got them to send us some visualizations and some assessments on what they believe is critical. What do they think will determine this election? The Prime Minister says 370 power for BJP and 400 power for NDA. Will that happen? So I'll start by getting Pradeep Gupta to explain what he thinks can change. And since this is about cephalogy, it's about numbers, we'll get them to explain some visualizations for you. So the first visualization, this is done by Pradeep and his team at Access My India. It will give you a sense of what can change. So Gupta ji, mic uthao, there's no music, so you only need to let the numbers dance. Uh, here it is, on your screen right now, his assessment on what can change, and then you can explain it. So at Access My India, we have divided these states into three major groups. The group number one, where you can see there are 257, 250 odd seats, where NDA won 238, meaning 90% plus strike rate they scored. The first and foremost for NDA to cross 400 marks, they have to maintain their strike rate in these states. And particularly if you can see in this group, Maharashtra is very critical and important state to be seen. 
So this is the group number one. And of course the Karnataka where BJP has done very good in last Lok Sabha election but recently concluded assembly election BJP lost very badly to Congress. So that is, these are the three states, Maharashtra, Bihar and Karnataka in this group to be seen closely. And of course, Delhi where Aam Admi Party and Congress has formed the alliance. So this will be interesting to see. Last time, all three fought separately. Now the group two is where so can and I just call that visualization? So what we've done is we've divided this into two parts. One is called happy hunting ground, where the BJP has the chance of doing better than it did in the last elections. And then we're classifying tough seats, tough seats where they haven't done well in the last elections and therefore uh, how have things changed. So Pradeep, there it is yeah. behind us. So group two is where BJP has done fairly good. They secured 60% of seats out of total 180 odd seats. So here is some scope or elbow room to improve their tally from 60% to maybe to 80%, which means about 30 to 40 odd seats, there is a scope in this group. And most important here is Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal. In Uttar Pradesh, last time, BSP and SP fought together and secured 15 seat among them, and Congress won one seat. So this will be interesting to see. So there is an elbow room of about 16 seats in Uttar Pradesh, Bengal. BJP won 18 seats out of 42 seats and 24 seats won by TMC and one seat by two seats by Congress. So here is another some scope one can say, but it can go other way around as well, particularly in Bengal, considering last assembly election they decimated the BJP in that sense. And the third group, which is very important and critical and everybody should focus, particularly in NDA side, where there are about 100 odd seats, the NDA could won only 5, meaning 5% 5 strike rate, 95% strike rate in favor of opposition. Last time, also, last time AIDMK had the alliance with ND, ND, BJP or NDA, meaning they have won one seat out of 40 seats in Tamil Nadu, Tamil Nadu and Pondicherry, of course. Then the Punjab, this time also all four parties seems to be contesting separately. Last time Akali Dal and BJP had the alliance as NDA and both of them won two seats each. So this is the battleground for NDA particularly try and improve their tally as much as possible to come close to 400 seats. So, so essentially, but essentially, Pradeep, your, where I want to challenge you on this is that you're basically going by the premise that 2024 is a done deal. That it's all about whether the BJP gets 300 to 325 on its own and with allies goes to 350, 360, or the BJP itself goes to 330 to 350 and with allies goes to 400. Am I correct? Then essentially you are telling me, despite the fact that there is possible losses in Maharashtra, double digit, Maharashtra, Bihar, to some extent the potential in Karnataka for the opposition, this election is basically about whether the BJP peaks at 320, 325 or whether it goes above 350. That's what the game is, no, right? Uh, Rajiv, I didn't say the done deal. All I am saying is this is the number game may play out in the forthcoming election. So that's the reason why, you know, in Karnataka, where BJP won like 26 seats out of 28 seats, only won by JDS. And this time, mm -hmm. JDS is coming in the fold of NDA, which is the BJP fold. Last time, they were with the Congress alliance. Maharashtra also, categorically, I mentioned. So these are the three, four states in the group one needs to be watched very carefully if BJP is able to maintain their strike rate. So, so basically what you're saying, BJP has to maintain its strike rate across what some would call the Northwest monsoon. Because if you look from Goa all the way to Jharkhand, and I'm including Jharkhand for a moment in the north, the BJP won 85% of the seats in this entire belt. Essentially 230 to 240 of their total number of seats, 303 came from here. You're saying, A, they have to either retain that 
and then add in South India, where there, which has been their traditional weak point, or the lotus has to bloom in the east, where between a Bengal, possibly Odisha, and the northeast, the BJP could make up for any potential losses it suffers in either north or west India. Am I broadly correct? Yes, you are absolutely right. Chalo, good. Thank you. No, so, if you look at what's at the back, in Andhra Pradesh, which is where GVL comes from, there's now an alliance with the Janasena and Chandrababu Naidu's TDP. Remember, last time the NDA had zero. There are 25 seats up for grabs, uh, GVL. Uh, if you look, for example, at uh, Odisha, there is supposed to be an alliance between the BJP and the BJD. They had only eight seats last time, 21. Now, the point here, GVL, is you're stitching alliances which just on the surface don't make sense. Typically, the number one party and number two party don't ally. I mean, have you ever seen the number one party and their prime opponent come together? I mean, that simply doesn't make electoral sense, usually. How are you making these things happen? You know, this is quite... Like in Punjab, the AAP and the Congress couldn't really come together because they were one and two. What is this magic wand that you have which can make the winner and his prime opponent come together in an alliance? Uh, Rahul, this hasn't happened yet. So it's, uh, it's premature for me to comment on this. But this is an election in, after four decades. I have been a close watcher of elections. I haven't seen an election like this for 40 years. You have never seen a Lok Sabha election where you could pick a winner well before election. This has not happened even in 2014. This has not happened even in 2019. Every time you expected it to be a hung parliament or no single party majority government. Here we are talking about a BJP tally at 325 or 350. So one fundamental difference is opposition is decimated well before the elections have been even announced. Okay, so... No, I, decimated I, in, in the conclave. Not no, by the no, 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 no. Because there's a sense you that this have is... To, no, just a minute. To push you, this is, there is a sense that this is the BJP's ploy to physically intimidate the uh, opposition or politically intimidate like the West Indies would do on a cricket field. You went on a cricket field, there were four fast bowlers, there was Clive Lloyd, the opposition was decimated. Similarly, there's Narendra Modi ji as Clive Lloyd, there are his four fast bowlers, Amit Shah, you can add another three. The opposition already feels that India Today conclave mein bol diya 400 seat, to 350 to kam se kam aega. That this is psychological. When you look at the numbers, why are you then plucking around, looking for allies? There's, why are you taking congressmen from other parties, giving tickets to former congressmen who've switched over? Are you as certain about these numbers as perhaps you're telling us here? Clive Lloyd Absolutely. or Vivian Richards? That, that's a different debate. No, we don't Captain get into was that. Clive Lloyd, but go ahead. No, Absolutely, Rajdeep. The question of uh, either the victory or the magnitude of victory is not in question. But this is the time that anybody who wants a political future for himself wants to align with the BJP. States like, for example, Andhra Pradesh, which you talked about, the parties are very keen to align with the BJP. No, but poor Jagan Reddy will feel so cheated. He helped you on so many occasions in the Rajya Sabha. I, I don't know. Last moment you leave him. No, I, I think it's not for you to comment for any individual. I have not seen any party making a comment like this. It is our right to align with any party to further our prospects. The bigger mandate is not 20, 2024 election. The real, real target is 2047 because it's Bharat is our agenda. We are not fighting just for a majority in this election. To realize the dream, it's an aspirational election. You see, normally in an election like this, voters will feel unenthusiastic about the election because the outcome is already known. No, Prime Minister Modi ji, the way he's, he's creating that aspirational India, people will turn out so in the, larger numbers no, than so what you've seen. So then why tie up with the Chandra Babu Naidu who called the same Prime Minister a hardened terrorist before the 2019 election? You see, my point is, if you're so confident of your numbers, why do you even need these alliances? Is that a recognition? That there are limitations, especially south of the Vindhyas or in a state like Odisha. And therefore, because this time has to be about 400 or about 350 plus, Sam Dam Dandabhed, election, kuch bhi karna hai, forget what's happened in the past, be flexible and tie up open door policy. Anyone wants to come into our party, please come, this is the time.
No, Rajdeep, there is, I, I think it's a, the larger mandate, as I mentioned to you, is Vixit Bharat. You need to get as many political parties on board. You need to get as many state governments to partner with you in this larger mission. Because we already have a two-thirds majority. Parliamentary uh, uh, passage of bills is not really our concern. But for, for realizing your dream of Vixit Bharat, you certainly need to get okay. everyone on board. Okay. okay. So that was Pradeep Gupta's analysis. I want to come now to Yashwan Deshmukh because we asked Yashwan the question, will the BJP cross the 370 mark? So there's a visualization that's coming up on your screen. Take a look at it very carefully. And then Yashwan can explain because you've broken this up into three categories. Seats which are tough fights for the BJP. That's the first category, the 100 such seats. The second category is where it's BJP versus Congress in a direct fight. The third is where it's BJP versus a regional party. Yashwant, 370 par Just, uh, uh, I want all of you to basically reconstruct everything into very, very simple three figures. 543 is the total Lok Sabha strength. Remember three numbers, 100, 200, and 243. Easy? What we have simply done is the 100 seats where the BJP is completely absent. Forget about number one, forget about number two. BJP is not even number three or four, maybe. 100 seats, BJP is just absent. Look at the 2014 and 19 vote shares over here. BJP polled 7.3% in these 100 seats and 5.8% in these 100 seats in 2019. BJP might be very happy to double, triple its vote share, even it then it reaches about 15% vote share. Will that convert into any seat? No. Nah. Big no. Maybe one or two here and there. That's fine. I mean, you know, you may have an odd in Trivandrum, one Kanyakumari, one Coimbatu, those kind of things, that aberration is fine. But zilch. Second is 200 seats. This is where the meat is. BJP versus the Congress, direct fight. Look at the gap of the BJP and the Congress vote share almost about 20% plus in 14, 20 plus 25, almost touching 25% in 2019. And there the BJP strike rate, look at that, 171 out of 200 in 14, and 185 out of 200 in 2019. And as per our MOTN, which will come in right now, which we did in January, by the way, BJP was almost touching 190 out of these 200. So what does it tell you? that between the BJP and the Congress, these 200 seats where the direct fight is, the BJP is leading over the Congress by more than 20% votes. There are number of states where BJP is voting more, voting more than 50%, number of states where the BJP is polling more than 60% votes. So no matter how much Nyayatra works out, this figure is not going to change just the way the first block is not going to change. BJP, no matter how much tries, nothing is going to change in the first block. No matter how much Congress is going to try, nothing is going to change in the second block. Third block is the most critical. That is 243, where it is BJP versus the regional parties. That is where the meat is. Now, out of here, 2014, BJP was about 27%. Look at the BJP vote share going up to 35% plus in 2019. Can it go even further? They got 108 in 14, 118 in 2019. Can they take it from here? Can they go further north from here? That's the big question. So question about 370, Rahul, and 400 plus, it's not about the zone one and zone two. It's the zone three where it is going to come down. But therefore, basically, since we are also entering IPL season, when I look at your numbers, if I was a captain of any of the, if I was Mumbai Indians captain, I want the Congress bowlers at me. Basically, what you are saying, the perfect matchup for the BJP is the Congress. Where there is Congress, the BJP is in a comfortable position. Where it is a regional party, it's a tough situation. And there are certain traditional areas, like Kerala, for example, where the BJP is still a single-digit party in terms of vote share. Broadly, therefore, I want the Congress to oppose me in as many seats as possible. It's the Congress which is the Kamzor Kadi 
as Absolutely. we go into this election. Absolutely. For the opposition alliance, their weakest link is the Congress. For the NDA, their weakest link, by the way, are actually their alliance partners in many states. For example, in Bihar, those who are contesting on BJP ticket have much better chance to win than the alliance partner JDU's ticket. Similarly, in Maharashtra, those who are contesting on a BJP ticket are likely to win much better than those who are contesting on Eknath Shinde or Ajit Pawar ticket. It's that easy. However, one interesting thing which Radhi has happened after our MOTN poll came out, GVL's party all of a sudden realized that, you know, putting up a manufacturing unit in certain area from the ground zero in a greenfield investment is a long shot. Acquisition is better. No, so let GVL so, respond to this. This is very so, important. Because each time the mood of the nation is put out by the India Today team, the BJP takes that very seriously. Last time we had the mood of the nation, which showed that the, um, the NDA alliance wasn't doing well in Maharashtra. You broke uh, Sharad Pawar's party. You took Eknath Shinde away from Udav Takre. Then the next time we put out a poll which said that they weren't doing well in Bihar, they took Nitish Kumar back and took him. So, you know, it's very difficult to do data when the factors that make up the data keep changing. They're basically, they become an... No, no, basically, BJP should put in the brackets MA. And MA is not Mukesh Ambani, it's mergers and acquisition. <laughs> you know, you're, you're very good at it. You're very good at merger and acquisition. That, that, to be very honest, our leadership... Uh, our politics is not media driven. We are not going to change our so politics. Sir, mood of the nation ke baad hi hota hai. Nahin, nahin, aisa nahin hai. Because I am telling you, I don't want to name our leaders, but they, we certainly look at media with respect. But our decisions are never, never, ever driven by media. So, therefore, don't... Uh, so, so, why no, did you... Rashi, 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 my home state. Rashi. Why did you break these two parties? If you were so confident, you see, what, as, as, as uh, Yashwant has pointed out, BJP very strong when it comes the, to the Congress. When it comes to the regional parties, you're in more no, difficult... Yeah. So, why break a regional party or why acquire a regional no, party? I, I think it's very unfair to ask me why they split up. You should ask those parties, what did they find so uncomfortable within them? Possibly... They say, they, the say they found the ED uncomfortable. No, 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 you see, pe ED no, then, then Congress should have split several times. Should Congress not be splitting? How many Congress leaders have been raided? Should, should every other party, should DMK not be splitting? Should, they should have come back and joined the NDA. So, should the BRS not be splitting? So, don't be unfair. Okay. So, parties which have split, they have split because of their internal turmoil. Because there are their inability to accept their own leadership, because they are corrupt parties, because they are family-driven parties, there is no scope for leadership to gain and emerge. Otherwise, if what you said is right, every party should be splitting daily. But they are corrupt only while they are the opposition. Once they come to you, they are a washing machine. Okay, That's you true. see these. You see, it is you in the media who keep targeting us like this. We have never see. We have never given a clean chit to anybody because he has joined either the NDA or BJP. So that's not fair. If there are any such cases, please approach the courts. What prevents the opposition from going to the court? It's so only, these are only political I think allegations. Only of two things can be true. Because it's an equation ultimately. No? Either the BJP sees the mood of the nation and makes changes in states where they aren't doing well, which is possible, which is my theory. Or the BJP already knows what the reality is and the mood of the nation captures the reality. And therefore, you have to act based on that reality, which means that I we do a great job with motivation. No, 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 so both of those, 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 those No, no, we give, we give ourselves too much of credit. The BJP, yeah, the BJP is a... Aap, our side, our side, what does that mean? Here, I must be on the side Rajdeep. of Modi Shah. If you don't want to take Just credit, don't take Rajdeep, it. Be very careful about what you're saying. Rajdeep is saying, I'm on the side of Modi Shah. I don't know where this is going next. No, no, only to the extent, it's a supreme election machine. You and I do one poll. The BJP today has resources to do half a dozen polls per week, tracking it on a day-to-day -day basis. It requires lots of money and they have no shortage of it. And, and they're are getting, they are get, I'll give you an example of a seat in Maharashtra. I know they've changed their candidate specifically after they did four rounds of polls in that constituency. Now you and I and Yashwant or anyone, even Pradeep, Pradeep may be doing it for them, uh, which is another matter. But the fact is, you're getting, therefore, data of a kind that no, we've but, never but seen. But I disagree with Rajdeep. I think all parties are doing polling. They do very extensive polling. In fact, the pollster of the Congress in 2009 was so horribly wrong that he convinced the Congress top leadership that they were winning. 
I'm not making this up. Is this not true? Is this not true? So it's not as if they aren't polling. They are polling as extensively, as rigorously. It's just that they have terrible polls. No, once again. No, no. I have. I have also done polls for my own party. But let me tell you, as a pollster. No, once again. Were your polls good or bad? They have their nose to the ground. They will know if you come and tell them. I'm telling you, if I do a poll and go and tell them Tamil Nadu we are sweeping, they'll say, "Tum kaha kar rahe ho? Tum kya kar rahe ho?" No, but our leadership. No, no, but Rajdeep, once again, let me let me ask Rajdeep. Rajdeep, is this not true that in 2019 the internal polling of the Congress Party had convinced the top leadership of the Congress Party that they were actually winning? That when the result came out, it came as a shock to them because their internal polling. They were spending money on it. It's not as if money wasn't being spent. Was telling them that they are winning. A, so because question, Congress doesn't live a, at a, the this ground question, level. A, this question should be posed to the Congress leadership. B, the fact is, if I have ten rupees in my pocket, there's only so much I can do. If I have hundred or thousand rupees in my pocket, I have far more options. The BJP, as I said, is a sophisticated, resource-rich election machine. But having said that, no. But if you have ten rupees, how much does that get spent on polling, and how much gets kept away? And that's also a fact. <laughs> well, they could let's, save let's, all let's, the money, Rajdeep. They let's, could let's, save all the money and simply read India today. <laughs> that's fine with them. Ah, because I remember the four states boss asked me to, you know, red flag. That was in 15th August issue last year. Uh, I was talking to AP and you know, Belkim. I was rather I, I I end up learning every time something. And he asked me what is the red flagging that of the BJP. I said four states that is Karnataka, Bihar, Maharashtra, and Bengal. And look at the way BJP has moved around that. First thing, the lowest hanging fruit, JDS in Karnataka, 10% vote share they got them in. I don't know why Congress did not do it. God knows. Second thing, Bihar, the unthinkable as they can. Of course, Maharashtra is a kind of a, they are doing in installments, whatever they are trying to do. And Bengal is going to be the mother of our election. Let me tell you one thing, which Pradeep would agree with me, and even Amitabh would agree with me. This election, all the other states, 30 as you may call it, quasi states and states, everything is this way or that way. There is only one state where actually there is going to be a fight for each and every bloody seat. That is going to be West Bengal. Okay, let's get Amitabh Tiwari then to give so us. I our just final. want to tell everyone, since we want to make the conclave experience as immersive and as experiential as possible, we want you all to vote. So we did some jugad in the way that India can do jugad and India today can do jugad, and hopefully it will work out well. I will throw up that same QR code. Remember from the debate which you guys were eating and watching, and I was working. Uh, from that debate, we'll put out that QR code, which will have four options of where you think the results of the poll will be. And before anybody trolls us, yes, we understand statistics, and this is not a representative sample. It's highly skewed. It's very urban. It's very suit boot. It's not really the real voter, but we're just having some fun, right? So we will have that up, and you tell us. So get your phones, get your QR codes, and then we'll do this in just a while. Amitabh Amita. Tiwari. So we'll have your visualization on the question of whether they'll get to 370 or whether they'll even cross 272, as Rajdeep is asking. What's your sense? See, essentially, uh, we've heard a lot about ABC category of seats in, in newspapers. So what we have tried to do is we have divided the 543 seats into ABC category. A is strong and relatively strong. So two out of three or three out of three wins in the last three election is A category. Strong, relatively strong. If the party has won only one out of three times in the last three elections, it is category B, which is relatively weak. And if the party has not won any time in the last three elections, it's a category C or a weak seat. This is the breakup of seats of BJP. So BJP, it is very simple for BJP to attain a single, simple majority because the A category seats of BJP are 262, the first column, which it has won two out of three or three out of three times in the last three elections. So if it's able to maintain, then it will be very near the simple majority. Out of that, if you see, 147 seats, which is more than half of the seats, are from the northern region, which means that the party has maxed out in the northern region and that's why it has to look for other regions to expand. Now, if you see, there are 82 seats in the B category, which it has won only one out of three times. Here, most of the seats are in eastern region, where the focus of the BJP is. 
Odisha, where it wanted to have an alliance or tried to have an alliance with the BJD. Then Bengal, where Sir is saying that it is the mother of all battles. Half of those seats are there. And then you look at the weak seats of BJP, is 199, almost 200. Some of these seats, the allies would have contested. Now in this, if you see, half of the seats are in south of India, 98. And the balance, or other 61 seats are in eastern region. So the 80% of weak seats of BJP are in south and east. That's why BJP has a look south and a look east policy, because here the focus so all this is effort, of the BJP. Because the Prime Minister, and he's going to be here at the India Today conclave, and we're all looking forward to that, the Prime Minister is spending a lot of time, energy and effort in the south. Do you think that has some impact in this election, or are they playing a much longer game? Work hard now, benefit later, or work hard now in the hope of benefiting right away? No, of course, BJP is looking for some gains in the short term and longer gains in the long term. Like, the alliance with the TDP is part of its long-term strategy in the southern state because Chandrababu Naidu is already 73 years of age and the party may want to co-opt the party after it ret retires. In what does co-opt mean? Co-opt means like what has happened with Shiv Sena, like what has happened with NCP, like what is likely to happen with parties, regional parties, who do not have stronger succession plan, like JDU or a BJD. You know, in a sense, therefore, Rahul, when you said, you know, the Modi Shah election machine, what stands out for me, they're actually focusing, and they've done it before we put out these graphics, on 161 seats, which they did not win last time, or came second and third. Now think about it, normally in life, we first strengthen ourselves where we are strong and then think about our weak areas. Here you've got a party which has spent the last two years focusing on their weak areas. You're seeing the Prime Minister now in South India traveling a lot there. You're seeing him focusing on East India, but they've actually planned this out. There have been a minister assigned to every three Lok Sabha constituencies and most of them have been assigned to constituencies which the BJP did not win in 2019 and 14. So that's where I say the election machine. You see, this is a, this is very systematic use of your political acumen along with resources and I keep maintaining all of this needs resources and your power machine. I know GBL will disagree on the ED point. You use it. But the fact is at the end of the day, you have to give them credit for the way they are thinking. South India, Rahul, is about vote share. It's about 2029. In Bengal, if you look at their numbers 10 years ago, they were nowhere in the race. They were almost a single digit party. Today they are competing for power. So it's been a 15, 20 year race. That's a 20 year race in Kerala. It's a possibly a 15 year race in Tamil Nadu. So I can see where the BJP is going. The real question in all your graphics, Rahul, you put is, kya BJP 370 or BJP 400? The question I ask, where's the opposition? Well, can the Congress cross 54? That's the question, Rahul. Not where BJP can cross. If the Congress can reach 100, Actually, our, I was hoping one of our four guests would tell me how can the Congress, if I was playing game theory, how can the Congress cross 100? Because if the Congress can cross 100, then the BJP can be brought below 300. And that should be the game if the opposition really was focusing on the 2024 election seriously. Unfortunately, it appears all of us are taken away and believing char so par, so no, we're not thinking so par. There were some uh, opposition-leaning cephologists who we'd invited for this conversation, they didn't even want to come. Now, at least you can come and argue and make your point. I mean, they ultimately didn't even want to come. So I don't want to say anything, but that tells its own story. So now, we're out of time on this debate. As I said, pick up your phones, and there's a QR code that's coming up on the screen. This is by no means a representative sample. It's not stratified. It's none of that. It's just, we're just having some fun. We're seeing what the pulse of the, what the mood of the conclave audience is. That's all that there is. Don't and be prepared to be trolled. Who will get trolled? The, the audience. Why will the audience get trolled? Because you will, you know, look, Rahul and I are not voting. We are only the judges here. We are the neutral umpires. This is Sorry? the mood of the... Yeah, it is anonymous. Yeah, it's anonymous, but you're being treated as a collective. The great and good yeah, of yeah. India. Also, you know, I know it's post-lunch and stuff, but some people haven't picked up their phones. That's not nice. Please pick up your phones. And there's a QR code in front of you. 
So get involved in this. Let's otherwise. And you know, don't worry, there are no. Yes, and that's the problem the EC also has. That voter participation has to be high. Otherwise, what's the point? And don't worry, there are no central agencies at the moment here. <laughs> So when you're voting, and, and your and your electoral bond bond won't become public, and the electoral bonds are also unconstitutional. So all, all that said, please, uh, there it is, and it's on your screen. So if you can just scan that QR code, go to the question. Uh, I still see some people are very excited in doing should, it. Should we get our four guests they to first give their numbers? No, we'll do that after this. At the end, huh. while that's going on. So now. I hope everyone's doing it. A lot of people so are doing it. So while they're going on, we'll get their numbers. Okay. So okay, now, GVL, you no, start. Let's what? finish this. Otherwise, we'll get burned. No, we finish then. Give the order. Oh, there it started. Okay. So there it is. So there are four four options here. Okay. So very quickly, I mean, it's very simple. Will the BJP get less than 272? Is this category? You can click it if that's where you think they'll end up. 272 to 325 is this category. Three. 26 to 370 is the third category, and 370 plus is the fourth category. So you got 90 seconds on the screen. This group of people are not very nice. Can They should vote. Oh, you voted! Oh, subse te. By the nice. way, well can, by the way, can all the 11 percent stand up? Who? No, no. The 11 percent making say, the electoral bond public. The, the, the 11 percent. No, no. The 11 percent who are saying less than 272 stand up. But you up. cannot make them stand Mr. up. Mr. Mr. Modi is coming tomorrow. He wants you to be <laughs> identified. No, no, that's not fair. Raj, we said it's Raj, we said it's very, very, very yeah. unfair. It's very unfair. Yeah, very unfair. I agree, it's very unfair. Right. Okay, all now voting is have you all voted? Not voted. This table or the front table oh, looks like they're very all sophisticated to do this. Ballot. You can't be so sophisticated to do. You've done this. Okay, they've all voted. You guys have voted. So now 53 seconds to go. GVL, आपके supporters थोड़े कम हैं यार वो 370 पाँच अच्छा उसे increasing now. I hope you don't have some people outside voting for you. Not you knew this was happening. You didn't know what's happening. I, if I had managed to get somebody, then you would have 90 percent plus ah, in the last in the bottom of the table. Because in this audience, we don't get the same level this of support. This is BJP. Please understand. I presume this is BJP, not NDA. No, this is BJP. Only BJP. This, this is, is BJP. only BJP. This is 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 17% 272 320 you have 18 seconds still is there anyone who hasn't voted say this is a waste of my time i'm not doing it i'm too classy and sophisticated for this oh i hope you guys joined in right okay good so now 10 seconds to go i think it's kind of stabilizing rajdeep likes to say as i said can we call this election now rajdeep still 3 2 1 okay we can call it <laughs> 10% have said bjp less than 272 if you want to identify yourself one last chance 272 to 325 is 16% 326 to 370 is 34%. 370 plus is 40%. Now, right? As if I have a, a small. Yes. See, those who have said less than 272, it is my firm conviction. Yes. They believe BJP will get more than 272, but they wanted to get less than 272. Please talk to them, and you will get this answer. Yeah. Who will be patai? उनको भी पता है मोदी जी बट बट यू नो दो गिवन थ्री सेवेंटी प्लस आर ऑल्सो गोनो फाइंड इट एक्सट्रीमली डिफिकल्ट टू टेल मी वेर दैट थ्री सेवेंटी नंबर इज कमिंग बट दैट फॉर अनदर डे आई विल गिव द पैनल टेन सेकेंड इच वॉट आर योर नंबर योर फाइनल नंबर दिस विल बी रिपीटेड ऑन काउंटिंग डे यशवंत देशमुख यू स्टार्ट इफ यू आर पॉलिंग हाउ मच डज द बीजेपी गेट हाउ मच डज द कांग्रेस गेट Come general election day very quickly. Twenty seconds. Very each. quickly, BJP no, is. Dada Lamba, ni bolna number batao bas. Number just the 41 number. Forty-one percent vote for the BJP, forty-six percent plus votes for the NDA. No seats, seats. Seats. Nee. No, no. Come yeah, on. Yeah, our duty is bati hui hai. No, no. no you but dekhe aisa hai. Aapne abhi jo numbers dekhe, bahut clearly bolna hai, bahut sam simple si chiz. Ten second mein, ten second diye na apne. Haan. जितना 335 हमने एमओटीएन में दिया है उसके ऊपर जो कुछ भी आना है मर्जन एंड एक्विजिशन से आना है ओके ओके प्रदीप गुप्ता योर नंबर्स नो प्रदीप विल कम लास्ट वन सेकंड अमिताभ तिवारी योर नंबर्स ओके सी 400 लुक्स अटेनेबल प्रभु राम इज हेल्पिंग बीजेपी एंड इट इज इट इज इट इज प्लीज 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 इट इज रीगेन लॉस्ट सीट्स इन 2019 अटेन ऐड न्यू सीट्स एंड मेंटेन मेंटेन द 303 सीट्स रीगेन अटेन मेंटेन Now, what's your number? Four hundred is attainable. Okay, GBL Narasimha Rao. This is an election. This is a vote for Modi, Prime Minister Modi, and for number, Ambo number, GI. number, number. Morality. Number, number. Mo I'm giving you number. Morality, optimism, development, and innovation. So how many of you will live by these acronyms? How many? Four zero four. 
ओके यू नो द थिंग इज द बीजेपी चार सौ चार ओके चार सौ तीन सौ तीन चार सौ चार सो लेस देन राजीव गांधी इन नाइनटीन एटी फोर दैट्स अनदर डिबेट बट गो एट प्रदीप नो आई डोंट है नंबर ये भी नंबर ना ना आई मीन स्टिल दीप अलायंस हैज टू बी फॉर्म इन प्रॉपर उड़ीसा शेप उड़ीसा महाराष्ट्र तमिलनाडु इतना लंबा बताओ नंबर बताओ बॉस नंबर आई के नॉट से बिकॉज ऑफ माय सम एग्रीमेंट आई एम बाइंड विद दोज एग्रीमेंट आई एम नॉट सपोज टू रिवील एनी काइंड ऑफ नंबर एनी प्लेटफॉर्म वी डू रिवील नंबर ओनली वंस दैट इज ऑन द एग्जिट पोल डे दैट इज ऑन द एग्जिट पोल डे ओनली वंस वी रिवील द नंबर ओके आउट ऑफ टाइम राजदीप वी आउट ऑफ टाइम दिस वाज अ लॉट ऑफ फन If you want Pradeep Gupta to give you a numbers, pay him like serious amounts of money. Otherwise, he doesn't give you just just getting a cockle of ticket doesn't cut it. Uh, but Yashwan Deshmukh and Amitabh Tiwari were a lot of fun. Jeevan Narsimha Rao for coming here to the conclave. Thank you very much. Ram is the concept that you put on. Everybody's kind of getting onto these abbreviations. We're very but, thankful for your time and uh, delighted that you could join us. But Rao, let me say this because otherwise no one will watch television over the next couple of days if you think the election is a done deal. In India, picture abhi baki hai. whether the bjp crosses 400 or actually maybe the opposition does a bit better than what we think we'll know sometime in the third to fourth week of may but for all of you for joining us thank you very much and uh, great to have all of you here